Hey, Dan Meyer here, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. Normally I talk about technology, whether it be virtual staffing or tools that you can use to work remotely or from home. Uh, I talk about data a lot, but you know, before I was a nerd, I mean, well, I've always been a nerd, but before I was like a nerd who got paid to be a nerd, um, I was a history guy. I actually have a major in history and was um, had a plan to teach. And it made me think about, you know, what about technology? What about virtual staffing? What about data? What is, what is the history of all that? And how is it relevant to what we're doing today? So a lot of people go, oh, history, uh, but you know, there's lessons from history that we have to constantly learn. If we don't, we're going to, we're going to lose out on insights that we can glean from people that are already figured out problems we're trying to solve now. So what I'm going to do in this video and, and the next video is talk about kind of the, um, the origins of e-commerce, right? So people ask me all the time about how they can do something online to monetize their intellectual property, to make some kind of business out of what they're good at, their expertise, how do they become a coach, how do they become an author, how do they become a speaker? Well, a lot of that is because we can do e-commerce, right? A lot of things that we're able to do in the internet space is because we can make money on it, right? So um, let's take a, a few minutes to kind of talk about the origins of e-commerce. And as we do that, I'm going to go through some lessons that are applicable today that are lessons that were first learned at some point in the last 30, 40 years um, of e-commerce, right? So um, we're going to recognize the fact that we're still undergoing a revolution. We'll talk about how to stay on the cutting edge. How do companies keep innovating to stay on the cutting edge? What are they doing to scale with systems. How do people make money online? Yeah, we can all know we can do it, but how does it really happen? Where did that start? Talk about the importance of building in redundancy, of staying connected to your customers. Um, and then most importantly, something that I learned from uh, Amazon and something that I think that we all constantly have to remind ourselves when we do business online is you want to think like a store, but you want to act like someone's neighbor. I'll talk about that as we get down um, into the presentation today. So um, it's going to be a, a different conversation. So hopefully you're interested in learning a little bit about the origins of e-commerce and how it applies to what you're trying to do today to make money online. So just a little bit of a history for myself. As I mentioned before, I'm a history major, right? That's my what I originally was. When I was a kid, I wanted to teach history. Like high school history was like the biggest thing I could ever think I would do. And through most of my, you know, childhood, that's what I did. I read a bunch of history books over and over, like, you know. Um, and I love history movies. I love history stories. Most people don't. But what I found is that, you know, the cool thing about history is that it's full of stories, right? It's full of lessons. It's full of experts sharing what they did to be special. The reason we talk about people like George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and Thomas Edison, because they did something different than everyone that came before them. They started something. And those lessons that they went through to be awesome, to become people that are famous in history, um, we shouldn't undervalue that stuff. So um, that's where I started. And then I got you know sidetracked, started working for a bank, ended up figuring out how to make money, got on the whole online thing, started doing data technology in Nerville, hit me big time, and then I went and did what I do now, which is basically run an uh, e-commerce company where we do virtual staffing, um, over 100 employees, making over a million dollars a year, helping you know 20 clients all across the country. So um, long story short, that's me, right? And nerds make more money, but let's look at the history of nerds because e-commerce is full of nerds. And basically we have to start with the most important thing about e-commerce is that the internet has revolutionized the way people buy and sell goods. You have to recognize the revolution. Um, we started as a revolution, right? The United States of America started as a revolution. We've been at the forefront of every type of industrial revolution ever since, right? Um, steam engines, railroads, uh, all kinds of things that helped us get through both World War I and World War II as far as technological evolutions, as far as military applications. The space race, the things we've done to be able to be ahead of the curve with global pandemics and with health crises and with trying to raise up our life. And most importantly, I think, and the ability to make the world a smaller place, right? We can connect with anybody pretty much anywhere on the planet at any given time. And that has revolutionized the way that we buy and sell goods. Now, most of us probably can remember a time before you could do that easily, right? But it wasn't, it was actually, you know, starting to be 20, 30 years ago when these things started. So um, you have to recognize the revolution isn't even close to being done. The way that we can use the internet 
to be able to do business, to do e-commerce has just begun, even though it's already 30 plus years into um, its origin story. Um, one of the cool things about technology is it it's pushing forward, right? People like to innovate, like to evolve. Think about what was life was like before smartphones, right? Before smartphones, we didn't have all the technology in our fingertips. We couldn't just look up anything we want. We couldn't watch whatever we want. We want. We couldn't buy things so quickly. That stuff for somebody thirty years ago was like magic. And now we take it for granted. But that cutting edge keeps moving forward, right? The new Apple um, iPhone is coming out in a few months, right? It's going to be another evolution towards something new that didn't exist in a couple of versions previously, right? We look at all the things that we do with 5G that are pushing us forward to be able to stay connected and push more data and do more things. We look at how many people are using Zoom every day. Staying on the cutting edge is what is really the point of e-commerce, right? It's to drive forward to give us easier ways, quicker ways, faster ways, more efficient ways to sell things online. And e-commerce is still on the rise. The innovations, the networking, the computer technology, it keeps moving at a rapid pace. We're in an age of artificial intelligence. It's already here, right? Hey Siri, tell me what day it is. That's AI, right? That's technology. That didn't exist 10 years ago. And who knows where it will be in 10 years, right? Siri is very basic AI. It's nothing all that special, right? So um, this is something that we have to think about when we do things with technology in our business. We want to have an idea um, on what the cutting edge is and keep an eye on it because basically we don't want to create things that become useless because they're too old. One of the challenges a lot of people have about have that have businesses that have been around for a while is they built websites on technology that is now outdated. They're very cumbersome. They're very slow. They're not mobile friendly. This is the kind of stuff we have to stay aware of. So when it comes to staying on the edge, kind of like staying on the cutting edge of e-commerce, you have to stay current. You got to read, you got to watch, you got to stay up to date on the movers and shakers. When you do this, it allows you to scale with systems, right? Systems win. Being able to do one thing well and then taking that system and replicating it to something else. Teaching a person to work within a system is so much more important than teaching a person to work, right? Being able to grow, to scale, it's all about systems. And you look at the biggest um, e-commerce companies in the world right now, they're because they started with a simple system and they scaled it. There's no better example than Amazon, right? When Amazon first started, it was just a bookstore, but now you can buy everything. They learned the lessons um, from selling books online and applied it to selling everything online. You look at how eBay started. This is like 1994, right? For some of us, that's ancient history. For some of us, that was before we were born. But for a lot of us, that was like yesterday, right? 1994, right? That's when the first e-commerce transactions started happening. And ever since then, we've seen more and more growth. We've seen um, the ability to do more and more things online. And the ones that are successful, the big mega companies that are pushing things forward, like Google and Apple and Amazon and Microsoft, um, they're only getting bigger. Apple just announced they are now a $2 trillion company. Apple is worth more than most countries. That is really not good, but that's where we're at, right? This is how they got there because they know how to scale e-commerce. They know how to make money online. It wasn't that long ago, the 1960s, when businesses first conducted electronic transactions. When I was working for Wells Fargo back in, in the late 90s, we were already doing a lot of electronic transactions, sending things through computer. Um, and you started seeing a lot of you know credit cards and banks and different things being able to start doing online payments and then being able to do online purchases and then being able to check your credit and, and check your uh, balance and this kind of simple stuff, right? That's late 90s, right? That was already you know 20 plus years ago. And as we've gotten more and more complex, we can now do so many things without ever actually um, using any cash, right? You can get a direct deposit from somebody that can then um, be used to be able to buy something without ever having to touch money. That's actually how most of us do most of our business nowadays, right? We actually, a significant percentage of what we do, especially during this pandemic, is all done electronically. Like, you know, I, I get money from my clients either through Square or through a wire. Um, I buy things through Amazon or through other retailers. I, you know, consume all my content where things debit from my credit card. I, I can go weeks without using real cash. So making money online is here. We all know it, but how do we really get ahead of it? What are we doing to not only stay in the cutting edge with technology, but to make sure that we're optimizing how we can make money? 
when you drive people to do online transactions, there are costs, right? So one of the challenges we have is that even though we may like the convenience of making money online, sometimes it costs us more to do it. And the ways that it's costing us more are things like fees or balance requirements or you know tra things where you have too many transactions, you have to pay a certain fee. Um, so being smart about this kind of stuff, looking for the best vendors, looking for the best apps, the ones that allow you to keep the most of the money you can is important to do. These are things that we forget about. We go for convenience and we don't think about the overall cost of stuff. Another thing that we have to think about when it comes to um, our online business and learning from the lessons of e-commerce is knowing about cloud storage, knowing about redundancy, knowing about backups, right? Um, luckily, we live in an age now where a lot of it's like kind of like brain-free stuff where things auto-save to the cloud, um, which does have some info security issues to it, you know, but for the most part, for most businesses, you know, it's actually a good thing. We don't have to worry about our computer crashing and losing everything, right? A lot of things that we do are auto-saved to some cloud somewhere. Like if you have a Mac, it's all going to be stored um, in your iCloud pretty much automatically unless you tell it not to. And that's actually probably not the best thing to do if you're worried about losing all your stuff. Um, all the backups that we have now, it all started from back in the 60s when the military was trying to figure out how to backup systems, how to make sure that you know everything they needed to know to, whether it be to you know launch a moonshot or launch a rocket, they wanted to make sure they had backups in place in case things went down. So that allowed us to start you know, building from that to what we have now, where we have all these cloud storage things, right? So whether you're using Google Drive or OneDrive or Dropbox, you should be having a redundancy uh, solution. You should mitigate your risk to losing your data. You also want to look at security, right? You know, cybersecurity is a big deal. Um, most of you are not going to be experts on all of this, right? Which is okay. So I'm already telling you, you have to stay on the cutting edge. To stay on the cutting edge, you got to read, you got to be involved, you got to you got to study all the time. I talked about security. I talked about how to be um, able to optimize your transactions to make sure you're using the best apps. This is a lot of stuff, right? So for some business owners, it may not be up to you to do all this yourself. You may want to actually outsource some, if not all of this. Another thing that we can do online that really has driven e driven e-commerce to where it is today is staying connected, right? Can you believe the first email was sent by CompuServe in 1984? And since then, we developed an entire etiquette about the things you do and don't do with email, right? We all get so much spam, and we hate it. We've actually gotten rid of emails for the most part and only look at users as we have to. We prefer to communicate via text, right? And text really is actually something that is the most common way to message each other. And it's less intrusive than phone calls. It's quicker at our fingertips and email to require us to do as many steps. Um, it's faster. And then you have all the messaging apps, right? So we have WhatsApp, and we have Facebook Messenger, and we have WeChat, and all these different things, right? So there's so many ways to stay connected. The important thing is that you want to make sure that you use the things that are best for you to stay connected. So I recorded a few videos in the past about some of the best tools for cloud storage, which I, which I just mentioned, as well as messaging apps. What are the best apps to use to stay connected and communicate with your team? So think about those things. Again, you don't have to be the expert, though. If this is the kind of stuff that you want to delegate, you can delegate this to a virtual assistant. You can have a virtual assistant stay in charge of, of making sure you have the best, newest, coolest messaging app, and you're optimizing your cloud storage, and you're able to use the newest tools when it comes to having a dynamic website. Let somebody else who's tech savvy take care of that for you. That's what I do. I'm a nerd and I know this stuff, but I delegate a lot of it, right? I don't know everything about everything anymore. I used to try and it overwhelmed me and made me not as successful as I wanted to be. So to be as successful as I wanted to be, I had to free up some of my time by delegating some of this stuff. And this gets me to the last lesson I'll talk about today. So today, the lesson that I think is most important is the one that uh, started back in 1991 when the internet first went. Um, local, uh, outside of schools and universities and military, when people could start using the internet, um, it allowed e-commerce to really start, you know, person to person, small business to small business, big business to big business and so forth, right? Um, and this is the idea that you can now think like a store, a physical store. You can have an inventory, you can have uh, signage, you can have do marketing, you can drive people to your location. You can try to have things in your store that attract attention, that engage, that get people to buy. All the things that go into running a retail store, we have to be able to have in the online space. But we have to 
to do it in a way where we're not just somewhere physically where people go. We have to act like someone's neighbor. We have to be in their community. We have to understand their life. So your target market, the people that you're trying to sell to, you're trying to build your network around, the ones you're trying to engage with, they are your neighbors and you have to treat them as such. People buy more based on other people's reviews than any marketing, right? People trust what other people trust. So you wanna think like a store and do everything a traditional store does as far as how it runs its business, but your way you do it should be like a neighbor. Walmart's done this pretty well in the physical space. Amazon has done this amazingly well in the retail space. This is what you do. You use reviews, you use um, you target market, you understand the demographics, you understand uh, the buying habits of your customers, and you do more and more to make them feel like you know them so well that they can't live without you. That's kind of the concept behind Think Like a Store, Act Like a Neighbor. That's really the, the things that I learned when I started looking at the origins of the e-commerce um, and the lessons I wanted to share with you, right? So things that you should be thinking about. Hopefully you jotted down a few notes. If you, if you didn't, um, the highlights are think about how to stay in the cutting edge. Think about how to have backup redundancy cloud storage. Think about how you're gonna communicate. Think about really the best ways to make money and how to keep optimizing that so you're keeping as much money as you can versus you know sharing it with other people um, in the name of convenience. You do these things, you're gonna be more successful. Now that's part one, right? I'm gonna have another video that will drop uh, later on part two about some more origins of e-commerce and the lessons it has taught me that I'm sharing with you, right? Things like understanding how to protect your dreams. We'll go more into cybersecurity. We'll talk about how to really shop from home. Like it's not as easy as it sounds. We all do it, but how do we really get good at it as a business? Talk about the right place, the right time. Talk some more about innovations, about how to stay on the cutting edge with things. We'll talk about how to really actually market, how to manage your storefront, how to actually make your business look like the business that your neighbors wanna shop at. And I mean your neighbors in the e-commerce space, out there as far as who you wanna have in your tribe, in your community to be able to purchase from you. That's the next topics we'll cover. So um, at this point, if you're interested in getting a virtual assistant to help peel away some of this stuff, you can delegate to that virtual assistant some of the things that you don't wanna do yourself. Whether it be worrying about cloud storage and managing your data, if you're trying to figure out how to organize things, how to update the way you take payments, how to stay on the cutting edge with your website so it's not stale and old looking, how to rebrand, that's the kind of stuff I have a team of people that can help you with. So if you want to get a virtual assistant, you just go to sonicva.com. It's S-O-N-I-C-V-A.com. We can do any number of things for you, not just the ones I talked about today, but things like managing your social media, uh, doing email marketing, uh, dropping a newsletter for you, doing data entry, getting you booked to speak on stage, um, helping you write your book, marketing your business, whatever it is you can think of that can be done from a computer, we can help you do it. And we will help you do it so that it increases your consistency. We, it helps you define your clarity, your message is clear and more easy to understand. And we help build a sense of certainty that your store, your business, what you're doing is gonna be there in the long term so that your neighbors, your customers are gonna have a peace of mind about doing business with you. So go ahead and drop a comment below if you have any questions or feedback. Um, check out our website, sonicva.com, if you want to get a VA to help you get started. And I hope to see you back here for part two of the origins of e-commerce. Thank you very much. Now go out and have a great day.